Shalom to all my brothers and sisters worldwide. I thought I'd share a brief uh, message from Torah before Shabbat begins. Um, I want to say hello to everyone, every one of you, my brothers and sisters, and everyone here who subscribed. I hope you have a restful uh, weekend and you feel refreshed for the following week. Um, today I'm just going to be um, reading from Bereshit, Genesis, uh, very briefly discussing the true creation of Elohim, very briefly. And in this video in particular, I'm going to be speaking about the dome, Rakia, the dome of our creation. In Bereshit chapter 1, um, we go through the creation. Light is the first command of what was created, to separate the day from the night. Now, in verse 6 is where it gets very, very interesting, and this is what I want to speak about. The dome, Rakia. In verse 6, it says, And Elohim said, Let there be a dome, Rakia, in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. Now, many translations will translate this as sky or atmosphere. Okay? Fair enough. Let's just say that that's the truth. Sky or atmosphere. Let's just go along with that. He then says, God made the dome and separated the waters that were below the dome from the waters that were above the dome. So, same word, rakia. So, makes the dome, separate waters from waters. So, I'm going to translate it exactly as some translations mistranslate it or misappropriate it. And let's read 7 as it's translated in English translations and see if it makes sense. Verse 7, And God made the sky and separated the waters that were below the sky from the waters that were above the sky. Does that make any sense to you? Now, some people claim that there might have been a covering over the globe model like an ice shield over the globe. That's a nice way of explaining it, I guess. It's an alternative. And they say that it broke down or melted when the flood came. There's a big problem with that. What is the problem? Is that throughout the entire Tanakh, many, many times after the flood, the dome, rakia, or firmament, is mentioned after the flood. For example, in Job, Chapter 37, it says there, Can you like him spread out the heavens or the sky, which is strong as molten glass? That's what it says. So it, it's obvious if you read throughout Tanakh, and I'll be doing a presentation, a very thorough presentation about this whole understanding of the true creation of Elohim, not this... Um, the science of our creation that we're taught since childhood. So, going on, there's another place that I want to mention, very compelling here. <clears throat> when he makes the sun and the moon, <clears throat> now listen carefully, in verse 14, he says, And God said, Let there be lights, plural, lights in the dome of the heavens. Now, once again, the same words being used, dome, Rakia. Now, if this does mean sky or atmosphere, like many translators misappropriate it, well then let's read it exactly as they translated it earlier. And let's see if it makes sense. And God said, let there be lights, meaning the sun and the moon, in the sky of the heavens. To separate the day from the night. Now, people want to play back and forth. The word is rakia. The word literally means beaten, firm, I guess you could say beaten sheet of metal in some sense. It's something firm. It's something that's a construction. It's not uh, flimsy air. It's, it's something firm. That's why it's mostly translated as firmament in more honest translations. For example, in this English translation, this is the Five Books of Moses by Everett Fox, which is the highest regarded Torah of all time, even higher ratings than every Tanakh ever made. It's so close to the Hebrew. 
And this author has the guts to translate it as dome, as it should be. So I just wanted to point that out. So God placed the two great lights in the dome of the heavens to separate the day from the night. Let them be for signs, for set times, for days and years. Let them be lights in the dome of the heavens to provide light on the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, verse 16, the greater light for ruling the day and the lesser light for ruling the night. And then he made the stars. That's it. It doesn't speak about planets. It doesn't speak about galaxies, black holes. Um, you name it. It's just the sun, the moon, and the stars in the dome to set times, dates, seasons. So it's very clear here. He says the greater light, meaning the sun, to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. Now we were taught as children that the moon is not a light. It's a rock. And it is the light of the sun that lights on the moon to shine on the earth. But once again, is that what God calls the moon? Does God say, and he created the, the, the great light, and then he made a rock to shine a light on the earth? Now, some people will say, and, and it's understandable, well, maybe he just means that they complement each other, and the sun created the light with the moon as it shines. Well, the problem is here, again, is with the dome. Now, if you do an experiment, which I have done many times, if you do an experiment, like I tell you here, test the temperature of the sun. We know the sun is hot, right? In the sunlight, it'll be hot. If you go in the shade, it'll be cooler. This is obvious. Now, what's interesting is if you go in the moonlight, the moonlight is actually cold. And if you go in the shade out of the moonlight with your thermometer, the temperature will go up. Yes. It will get warmer when you get out of the moonlight. Now that is very strange. That is not scientifically correct, you know, based on their teachings. This is this should not be happening. The moon has its own light source, my friends, my brothers and sisters. It actually has its own light source. Another thing you were never taught in school that you could test out for yourself. The sun can preserve certain meats, foods, like beef jerky. I'm not trying to be silly here, but yes, it's good for your skin regardless of what is told. We are told lies that the sun is bad for your skin. Cover your skin up. God made a mistake. The sun is bad for you. No, it's not true. The sun is great for you. Stop buying these polluted products that are an abomination to God's creation. It's, a, it's an insult to the creator. The sun is good for your skin. Now, on contrary, the moon is bad for your skin. And it will actually spoil food. Leave food in the moonlight. Test it. It will spoil your food. It's bad for your skin. Now, the sunlight will not help your fire. If you're in a campfire, you're putting a fire up, the sunlight's going to affect it in a negative way. If you build a fire in a camp, if you've ever done camping, in the moonlight, the fire will grow intensely. These are two separate lights that are within the dome of the heavens. The stars, sun and the moon, are within the dome. There are no planets. Everything that's called a planet, if you actually look into it, they're not planets. They're stars. They were always called for 4,000 years. They were called wandering stars. Why is it? Because if you look with your own telescopes and your own uh, viewing, you will see that they appear as stars. And not only that, you will see ripples in these stars, like they're in water. Now, to separate the waters from below from the waters above, that's what the dome is for. For example, speaking to me, it's understandable, based on everything I've learned for the last over 10 years about this subject, that the waters below are the oceans, lakes, and rivers. From the waters above the dome is the blue sky that you're looking at. Yes, the blue sky that you're looking at is the waters above the dome. That's what they are. And finally, nobody's ever asked this question. Why does a rainbow appear? What is the rainbow? 
What is the rainbow? We know what it was given for, but what is it? I'll tell you what it is. It's a reflection of the dome above your heads.